This week on C Plus News Time, Universal's been having troubles as of late in regards to its monster movie universe. Oh, you didn't know that was a thing because you didn't want to suffer through another movie about the mummy? You're a smart cookie. The studio is struggling to make their own hero-driven shared movie-verse, but they're willing to take the time to perfect it. Judging by a certain movie's performance this past summer, and the fact that they lost their biggest producers, they're going to need the time. Also, full screen closed down its streaming service. What's that? Oh, you didn't know about that one either? Makes sense. And the story will follow up on Disney XD's gaming block because, well, it's not around anymore. And Nerdist's own streaming service examined too. What gives? Good thing it's almost Christmas because I've got a present for you. It's C Plus News Time. Now, please tell me you don't already have one of these. You don't want to know the things I had to do to get it. Okay, it was sex stuff. It's C Plus News Time. Delivering to you the news you didn't know about, the news you didn't care about, and the news you didn't know you cared about. With host Chad White. Now, here's that host, Chad White. This episode of News Time is brought to you by Tony Stompin' Boots. This Black Friday, don't you dare leave home without a pair. Perfect for crushing any old bitty in your way. Welcome back to C Plus News Time. I'm your host, Chad White, and this is the comedy news they didn't know about for the week of November 13th, 2017. Movie universes are all the rage right now. From Marvel and DC to Harry Potter and the Fast and Furious franchises, it seems every studio is in want of their own cash cow they can exploit for years to come. Of course, these expanded titles aren't without their own faults. Fantastic Beasts, while largely enjoyed, was called boring by some reviewers, like David Edelstein, who dubbed the movie a, quote, distinctly unmagical slog. Or take the final entry into the Hobbit series, where the rap reviewer Inko Kang referred to the Battle of Five Armies as a showcase of Peter Jackson's worst penchants, from long battle scenes to disappointing fan service. Seemingly, no franchise is free from critical and fan hatred. You know, except for Stair Warps, which is apparently the greatest franchise around, even after its hollow story is repeated again, and again, and again. Two weeks ago, Universal's latest attempt at a chise, and please, let's get this cool new phrase going, hit a snag in the road. The Hollywood Reporter alerted the world that top producers in the series exited. This comes after one of the summer's worst bombs, a reboot of The Mummy starring Tom Cruise, failed critically and commercially. Uh, let's back up. What exactly is Universal's universe? The Dark Universe, a name stolen from DC Comics, was intended to be a series of films featuring classic movie monsters like Dracula, Frankenstein's Monster, His Bride, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Invisible Man, and Wolfman. Producing architects Alex Kurtzman and Chris Morgan were in charge of building the world. Now imagine how Marvel producer Kevin Feige comes out of his office every few months with new phases of the Avengers characters. Um, uh, phase six will involve a dead Tony Stark making out with the live Grey Hulk. Look for it in 2037. So the Dark Universe, or the Monsterverse as I've been calling it for the past few seconds, began its march onto franchisability this past summer. Or did it? Way back in 2014, Universal released Dracula Untold, starring the not-gay character from Beauty and the Beast, and a grab bag cast of who, and why is this person here, and those Game of Thrones checks must not be cashing. This was a low-key way meant for the new franchise to start this brand new universe. They even did reshoots in order for it to fit in with the overall theme. Hell, it ended with Dracula waking up in modern-day England. While not entirely good, the movie performed decently enough. That wouldn't deter the then-producer Kurtzman from saying the movie is definitely not a part of the Dark Universe. But what does that guy know? He quit the chise. He's a big, fat quitter. The Hollywood Reporter learned that Kurtzman's deal with Universal ended in September with neither party seeking a renewal. Both he and Morgan have seemingly moved on as the former returned to the 90 CBS shows he's producing and the latter is taking on the fast spinoff starring The Rock and Jason Statham. So the Dark Universe is losing two producers. Big deal. Actually, yeah, big deal indeed. Universal put a hold on this year's filming of The Bride of Frankenstein, leaving Famey's 
like Angelina Jolie and Javier Bardem out in the lurch. They're going to have to kiss that February 2019 release date goodbye. To make matters not so gooder, writer David Coop's script wasn't well received by executives and Beauty and the Beast director Bill Condon is said to not even be attached to the movie anymore. This hoopla over the universes is contrived and ultimately damaging to regular moviegoers. Of course no one wants to see another Mummy movie after the last entry came nearly 10 years ago. Universal got so hyped that they released a cast photo from the yet to be scheduled entitled franchise center film. Look at these actors. They think they're going to be the next Avengers. Poor, poor souls. Universal president of production Peter Kramer was quoted on the matter. He suggests the company is going to put the future of the movies into several filmmakers' hands. People who are capable of world building and artistic visions these chises need. Unlike Marvel, they're going to take some time to let it cook. He added, quote, We are not rushing to meet a release date and will move forward with these films when we feel they are the best versions of themselves. Notably, Universal is now looking for directors and the likes of Jason Bloom to make standalone films with no discernible overarching connection to the larger universe. So, one-offs. Can the D Dark Universe, unofficially titled Monsterverse by me, change its ways? Universal sure hopes so. They've been holding on to these unused chises for so long that people have almost forgotten about them. I assume. It's hard to tell. But plenty of movies within the established chises improved their own on their predecessors. The second Hobbit movie was better regarded than the first. The new Spider Boy is pretty cool compared to the last one. And the last four Fast movies are quarter miles ahead of the first four. Seriously. Universal needs to be ushered in the right direction or they'll have a monster of a time getting things going. My final story surrounds full screen and its shuttering of its premium streaming service. To many of you, full screen means nothing. It's a name, not one of the internet's largest employers of online talent. You didn't even know it had its own streaming service. And you weren't really missing much. This past week, Fullscreen laid off 25 people from its staff. The company found after a year of a and a half of streaming that things were not looking good for their financials. It began in spring of 2016 as a place for a younger audience to watch full-length shows from their favorite creators. For $5 a month, teens could see Grace Helbig, Miles McKenna, and a dozen other names I do not know host their own shows. Along with originals, the service included old favorite shows like Parks and Rec and movies like Not Another Teen Movie. All in all, it sounded like a good deal for a younger generation. This isn't the first time this year full screen laid off workforce. In September, the company dropped 3% of its staff in order to, quote, streamline operations and pursue a deeper focus on original programming. CEO George Strompolos told Press that the company is going to focus on their creators and brands from now on, building on them and introducing new ones along the way. To which I I say full screen C plus comedy is for sale. Wink. Full screen is merely six years old and yet it generally owns a percentage of YouTube's biggest stars. Them, Polaris, Nerdist, and others are the hitters in terms of name brand online production companies. But if full screen can fail, where does it leave its friends? Remember when I did a story on Disney's foray into gaming based coverage with Disney X DXP? Yeah, yeah, I know you don't. No one really watches this stupid show. But the short of it is that the mouse saw the interest in people just watching games, so they decided to capitalize on it by giving the likes of Parker Plays, The Attack, and IGN their own shows. The block was doing well for them for a couple of months. That is, until it disappeared entirely. For what seems like no discernible reason, the entire seven hour block is now gone. No new episode nor reruns have aired since August, and none of the show creators are talking. The Attack, for instance, is sitting in purgatory as they have literally no money to stream their regular shows, forcing them to throw bandage style shows on their Twitch streams. I love these people, so it blows seeing their dreams be halted by contracts or money or whatever is causing these production delays. Then there's Nerdist Alpha streaming service, which, again, why exists. Project Alpha was announced in June of 2016 as a joint venture between the newly partnered Nerdist and Geek and Sundry. The companies dubbed it an 
interactive membership service where viewers could watch brand new shows live and immerse themselves as more than a passive audience. They pushed the service as complimentary to their regular free shows and streams. Yes, Alpha costs money $5 just like the soon to be dead full screen service. All of Nerdist and Geek and Sundry's shows move behind a 48 hour premiere paywall and the new shows like Sidekick with Matt and Myra live entirely behind the wall. While numbers of subscribers much like full screen haven't been released, Alpha looks to at least be evening out. It's a direct way for viewers to support their favorite creators, which is what any fan should want. So what if the shows don't get the live love or high view counts expected on YouTube? These niche created services are somewhat of a mixed bag. On one hand, you get the chance to put money right into the hands of the people you like to watch. On the other, if these new arms of the companies don't do so hot, well, they may be out of luck. Whatever the case, Full Screen, Nerdist, and the others have what's best in mind for their creators. Either that, or they're really good at not showing their poker face. And that's all the news I have for you for this week on C Plus News Time. Why don't you subscribe and check out one of our other videos? Of course, you can head to the website cpluscomedy.com, where we've got so many great things that they are not hidden behind a paywall. But you couldn't give me money. I would love that. Follow us on Twitter at C Plus Comedy. Follow me on Twitter at Chad Black White. Like us on Facebook. Listen to the Constitutionals podcast. And seriously, guys, sign up for my streaming service. It's called uh, C C Plus Streams. It's uh, you actually get money from me. You're welcome.